47 on your side news. Almost 50 years ago, a dream was born. A dream to bring quality health care to the children of the valley. Today, Valley Children's Hospital is taking that dream into the future. 47 on your side news presents an historic look at the new Valley Children's Hospital. Here now is John Wallace. And good evening, everyone. I'm here at the brand new Valley Children's Hospital in Madera County, a place that's basically a city within itself. Within this more than half a million square foot facility, thousands of children will get state-of-the-art medical care, giving them and their families hope for a very healthy future. And just like those children, this hospital is designed to grow and to change over time. Now, over the next half hour, we're going to show you more of this new hospital and this location and also tell you about the wonderful efforts that led up to this dream becoming reality. And, and as a new era for Valley Children's Hospital is ushered in, it means the old hospital at Shields in Millbrook will become a part of history. But before we move forward and talk about the future and look at the past, we're going to tell you about a well-orchestrated move that will be taking place. This is one of the ambulances, and several more of them will be making the trip across the river up Highway 41, about a 10-mile journey. We'll tell you everything that's involved in that, and over the next half hour, keep it one thing in mind. This is for the children, giving them a new place to heal. For the Children, A New Place to Heal, hosted by John Wallace. Bigger is better than the New Valley Children's Hospital in Madera County will certainly provide double the quality of care that has been given to thousands of children over the past nearly half century. Boy, that's saying a lot too, considering the high standard of attention that has been given there for actually 46 years. The new hospital is and it's, it's twice as big as the existing location at Millbrook and Shields, and even more room to grow even larger. Rex Riley is with uh, Valley Children's Hospital. Rex, this is an exciting, exciting time for you. Yes, it's exciting for all the staff who work at the hospital and the medical staff, but I think it's more exciting for the children of Central California. They're going to get something that we believe they deserve, the, the world's best children's hospital. Nuts and bolts, facts and figures, what can you tell us? Well, um, as you mentioned, um, the new hospital is twice as large as the 26 different addresses that we had previously. We have 615,000 square feet compared to just 300,000 square feet in the old facility plus the other buildings. Uh, we do have the capacity to go to over a million square feet. One of the nice things, too, is that we have 50 acres here. Uh, we had about 10 acres at the old site, so it means that there's going to be better parking and that room for expansion. Actually, uh, since the uh, first shovel was uh, dug, I guess, well, it was only three years ago, wasn't it? That's yes. quite an undertaking in quite a short period of time. Yes, actually, uh, the hospital's really being built within the uh, allocated time that we had. Uh, the official groundbreaking was September 22nd, uh, 1995, and three years later, we're opening up. Are you ready for any unforeseen circumstance? We had a false fire alarm, Rex, you'll admit this, about 10 or 15 minutes ago. We had to clear this uh, uh, first floor. Yes, that's true. Uh, well, certainly the move has been very well planned. We have a team of people uh, with some outside assistance, and they've done a wonderful job, and we're going to put them to the test tonight. They're working behind us, too. Yeah, They're right. busy, busy bees. It's been a couple of weeks uh, moving uh, outpatient clinics and ancillary departments of the hospital, yeah. culminating tonight with the move of the children. Rex Riley, thanks for being with us. Good luck. This is truly an exciting time, and it's a dream that's going to be realized overnight, many dreams, actually. You can imagine it certainly didn't come easily through. Three years, more than $174 million have gone into this new Valley Children's Hospital with attention paid to every last minute detail. Now our Kenny Crumpton shows us the hospital from the ground up and how every aspect has been thought through. From the air, the new Valley Children's Hospital looks like a multicolored castle from a child's dream. That's the look designers had in mind. A 60-foot hand-woven rug of the world greets you in the main entrance or rotunda. 
instantly capturing the imagination. It was designed with the intent to be friendly to children, to be less intimidating, not to look so much like a hospital. And the intent was to go ahead and have education classes here on this carpet also. So the school, area schools can come out and play around on the carpet and walk around the world. When night falls, it takes on a new persona. I don't know if you've looked at it from uh, across the river at night, but when the lights are all on, it's a great sight. A few months ago, construction crews were burning the midnight oil to make deadlines. Walking down one of the infinite halls, it becomes obvious there is more to this 226-bed facility than meets the eye. Ceiling treatment here is just to break up the plane of the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And you look down on the floor, we have a triangle on the floor. From 77 rooms housing two to three patients to 226, 158 of these rooms are private. Earlier in the year, fiber optic technicians completed the delicate task of creating a ceiling of stars following the Our Universe theme for each room. How's this for a nightlight? And where did the stars go? There they are. Constantly changing galactic neon lights line the halls, accented with rocket room numbers. And the rainbow-colored rooms are built to make young patients forget they are in a hospital room. We've basically divided the room into three parts. That side of the bed's for the family, and the family has that area to deal with. Mm -hmm. The center of the room is for the patient bed, obviously, and this side of the bed is where the, um, the staff render medical procedure, medical care off this side of the bed. So the room's compartmented. In their rooms, children will be able to make new friends on a special internet connected to other rooms in-house and at least one children's hospital across the country. A private bathroom and desk is also in every room. Months ago, crews were completing the inside of the building, but much of the artwork can be found outside in the numerous courtyards. A favorite is the Serenity Courtyard for parents only. A peaceful area for the parents to come and relax a little bit from the tensions and the problems that can be created coming to here. And this courtyard here has been upgraded by one of our donors that allowed us to put in the water feature and a couple of bronze statues. So this was just really a peaceful place or escape, or for lack of a better word, for parents to come. Yes, sir. The Star Tunnel Courtyard is named for obvious reasons and sits next to the schoolroom in the hospital. It is built for the best part of school, recess. Be kids, kids need to be kids, and we've tried to go ahead and build that into the, uh, this facility. This is the classroom connected to the Star Tunnel Courtyard, where teachers and computers help students keep up with schoolwork. Earlier in the year, tons of dirt and concrete looked like a mess out back. Now, it's the main courtyard behind the hospital, built to accommodate wheelchairs, crutches, and walkers. We have several play structures around here. And we also are going to go ahead and add some canopies for a little bit of shade. Administrators want children of all nationalities to feel at home in the exam rooms. So each wall has a picture of a different country and sites from around the world. Around each corner you can find state-of-the-art medical equipment and other provisions to make the experience pleasant, like these RV hookup stalls for families staying here for weeks on end but designers are extremely proud of the under-the-sea themed cafeteria. We've got the coral columns hiding, our coral reef hiding the columns. Mm -hmm. We have the murals of uh, reef the activity. You see in the sea on the bottom. Right, the sea. and overhead we have the uh, waves breaking, with, uh, highlighted with a fiber optic which changes color and gives the appearance of the waves moving. From the inside out, the New Valley Children's Hospital is something we all can be proud of. It's really exciting, too. Much of the New Valley Children's Hospital is already up and running, but there are many important things still missing. The little patients. And Kevin Walsh is at the old hospital site to tell us about the exciting move that will take place overnight. Hi, Kevin. 
Hi, John. Uh, a little less than six hours. They'll start that big move at about midnight, and they will continue until about 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. The primary mode of transportation for the little ones will be ambulance. On my way to Valley Children's Hospital. This will be one of the buggies that's uh, bringing the kids up Highway 41 to the new facility across the river. And uh, lots of ambulances, dozens of ambulances, and more than 100 kids will be making that special trip. I know what it's like trying to get my family just to go out to dinner or to go to a picnic or something. Can you imagine coordinating the effort of dozens of vehicles and all those kids who are sick and are, are injured? You can just imagine how difficult that will be. And that brings me to my first guest. This is Deborah Kruger, who works in the intensive care unit for some of the premature babies that we have. Debbie, give us an idea of how difficult this will be to get the kids from this point here at Shields and Millbrook across the river to the new facility. Well, a lot of our patients require some extra respiratory support, um, and these units are specially equipped with oxygen and everything that they need in a mobile environment. Um, we have a specially equipped transport isolate, and they will, be, they will be accompanied by a respiratory therapist and a registered nurse specially trained in the transport of infants. Okay, and I was just in the ICU a short time ago, and there are some some kids that are that are very premature and, and some are just a couple of pounds how critical is it to have all that that care right on hand for that trip over it's very critical because um, a premature infant needs the oxygen to maintain um, mm -hmm. in order to breathe and and uh, and what about will the parents be going along for the ride not not in the ambulance. They can come over in a couple hours after the babies have been settled in. Okay. All right. Debbie, thanks for joining us here. Now, of course, we're talking about the new facility. We're talking about this old facility. But we wouldn't be talking about anything if we didn't have some very special people to talk about in the first place. They are the little ones who depend on Valley Children's Hospital for their medical care. And recently, I spent some time with one of the little ones. His name is Josh Lyon. Wait, now, where are we going? Go into your room. Okay. Okay. Josh Lyon is three years old. This? Yeah. Oh, it's, that's the model. Like any other three year old, he's inquisitive, full of energy. <laughs> You'd never suspect he's battling leukemia. When you go to the hospital and you get treatment, what do they do? Let's talk about this whale. What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about this later. That was Sister Gabby talking. When Josh doesn't want to gab, she does it for him. And in this case, his reluctance is understandable. And um, now he's on what you call a maintenance program. Ingrid Lyon is Josh's mom. And they draw blood from his metaport and they check his counts and um, that's, that's to determine whether or not he'll be receiving chemotherapy. It's tough treatment and Ingrid wouldn't have anybody but the folks at Valley Children's taking care of her son. Well, the nurses are really, really um, compassionate. They make him feel at home. It's like a family for him. In fact, he calls it his school. We were just talking about our proximity to the emergency room. Josh and family checked out his new treatment center recently, and as nice as it is, they are all hoping to be less frequent visitors in the future. And that future is built on a solid past. About 50 years ago, that's when Valley Children's Hospital all started with the hopes of five women. 47 on your side's Mark Cotta shows us those dedicated ladies and how they turned their dreams into a reality, a reality that has provided hope for families in the Valley ever since. This was the spread from the Fresno Bee. Proposed Valley Children's Hospital shown inspecting the donated land for the building. And this was a fundraiser for um, the Children's Hospital. It all started with a couple of Central Valley sisters concerned about the future of their unborn babies. Here were two young sisters, both pregnant, and they thought about the future and they knew they'd have more than probably one child. And where do you take your child when it's ill? There wasn't any place. So that's why they got the idea, we ought to have a children's hospital right here in this valley. Virginia Ginny Mukes was lured in by the Giffen sisters' dream. Ginny knew Patty Randall and Carolyn Peck were serious, and so were others in the valley. 
particularly mothers concerned about their babies. We wouldn't have our hospital had not been for the enthusiasm of those Gill ladies which went out and stirred up their communities. Back in the summer of 1949, the first public meeting in support of a Valley Children's Hospital was held right here at the Californian Hotel. This is the ballroom at the Californian Hotel. And if you listen closely, you can almost hear the echoes of that first meeting that created the original Valley Children's Hospital. People came, you know, you asked your friends, come on over, we want to do this. You asked the doctors you knew that they talked to, and the businessmen, and let me tell you, the husbands were very supportive. That's right, even in 1949, husbands show up willingly to map out a strategy to build a new children's hospital. And later, husbands follow their wives to one event after another, as fundraising begins for the dream. The hospital guilds had been formed, and the women pulled out all the social stops to make money for the dream. And they took in about uh, 25, 40 ladies and got them interested in this wonderful new project, the hospital. And then they went out and raised money. They had barbecues, they had dances, they had dinners, they had tea parties. And even ladies who were golfers would find a way to raise money for the children's hospital when it was early. Three years later, with 10 acres of donated land from William Helm, the first Valley Children's Hospital opened its doors at Shields and Millbrook in Fresno. And now, almost 50 years after the sisters discussed their concerns about a children's hospital, movers can't work fast enough again. A man with donated land, Richard Gunner, has supplied the real estate to expand the dream and take care of the growing need. The need's there. We now don't have to take our children to San Francisco or Los Angeles. To, for any kind of help. You can get it right here. Well, actually, they come to us sometimes. Oh, they certainly do. Jenny was there for the groundbreaking of both. But five women in particular are given credit for rallying the community to make it all happen. Patty Randall, Carolyn Peck, Agnes Crockett, Helen Moppin-Ross, and Gail Goodwin. Some are with us, others are not. But you will see their names on the streets around the new Valley Children's Hospital. Just one small honor for such an enormous contribution by the caring mothers some 50 years ago. All right, in the show about Valley Children's Hospital, just cruising along, I've moved inside the ambulance. It's about 100 degrees in here, but when the kids load in here, they'll have it cooled off with the air conditioning. We're going to move forward, but we're going to take a couple looks uh, over our shoulder. That's the best way to move into the future. you got to know where you're going, or you got to know where you've been before you know where you're going. And it's not just the patients and equipment relocating. Some doctors are making the trek, and they're drawn by the people and the state-of-the-art technology. If you're going to need anything for your home in the next year, plan to be at Ventura TV and Appliances Mega Sale. Everything is on sale. Like Symphonic's 19-inch color TV with remote just $149. Sharp's ViewCam with color LCD view screen and much more only $399. And Whirlpool's extra large capacity two-speed washer and matching electric dryer just $599. Savings that are out of this world. Now at Ventura TV and Appliance. The Mega Sale. Could you use some extra cash? Well, the Fresno Coin Gallery is paying top prices for coins and gold jewelry. Diamonds, class rings, broken chains, sterling silver, even dental gold. Or we can make you a fast, confidential four-month loan on your items. We sell jewelry, coins, and bullion, and we sell and rent metal detectors. For Fresno Coin Gallery, family-owned since 1982. Come in and see us. The Fresno Coin Gallery and Jewelry Exchange on Blackstone between Ashland and Gettysburg. Call 222-COIN. No matter what's down the road, you've got it handled in a quick and nimble DeVille with its 275 horsepower North Star system and available Stabilitrack to help you hold the road when things get slippery. You can just drive, enjoy the ride, you'll make it DeVille for the time of your life. Yeah. See your Cadillac dealer today. 
47tv.com has your news, weather, and sports 24 hours a day, plus daily features like picture of the day, horoscopes, and lottery results. Looking for a great beauty salon in Fresno? Go to 47tv.com and see all that Hungry Hair has to offer. Hungry Hair in the Life section has styling tips and experts to answer your questions on hair, body, massage, and nail fashions. Get the latest beauty advice free from the hottest salon in the valley, Hungry Hair in Big Garden Village, and online with 47tv.com. Well, as Kevin showed us earlier, moving an entire hospital 11 and a half miles up the road has been a tremendous logistical challenge. But in relative terms, I think, uh, everyone and everything just has to, like I said, move up the road just a tad. Not so, though, for a pair of doctors who are beginning a new phase of their career right here at the New Valley Children's Hospital. And Holly Lindahl introduces us to the two who are making a big move. I think 15 degrees when we were here. <laughs> we're moving a three bedroom house which took forever. I don't, I don't ever want to move again, ever. Besides the stuff being dollied in and the patients soon to follow, two new doctors are also on the move. They're following their hearts and minds to Valley Children's Hospital. And Dr. Carl Arwada is one of those doctors. I've been coming out here periodically for the last year, commuting from San Francisco. Uh, to the valley, spending a week here doing procedures and then going back to San Francisco with my family. For Dr. Owada, the decision to leave his job at UC San Francisco was easy. UC San Francisco is a state institution. If people are civil employees and you get that sense of, you know, I'm here, I'm just getting the salary, and, and as soon as I can get the hell out of here, I'm out of here. He discovered at Valley Children's Hospital the dedication and passion for children matched his own. Here it's completely pediatrics. And I think people are more focused on taking care of kids specifically from the ground uh, level up. Uh, that I think that makes a big difference. And it's because of his love for children that he doesn't mind telling you that he prefers to work with them more than adults. And kids are fun. They are. One thing is, is, is they're born with a lot of their problems. It's not their fault that they have a hole in their heart or their arteries are switched around they shouldn't have been switched around. For adults, a lot of their disease they brought on to themselves and I, I guess I have, don't have as much compassion for that. Um, adults complain a lot, they have surgery and they lie in bed and they moan and they groan and they don't want to get out of bed. A child, as soon as they feel well enough, they've had their major incision of their chest. Um, and on operation, as soon as they feel well enough, they're out running up and down the hallway. Those are hard. And when it comes to equipment to detect heart problems with children, it doesn't get any better than this. This big digital x-ray machine will allow Dr. Owada to see a patient's heart. The General Electric um, product, and this is their second installation of this level cath lab in the United States. Yeah, all this technology is great, but that's not what brought this doctor to the hospital, but rather the people. But you're about to meet a doctor that found all of this technology rather irresistible. You come here and you see these rooms, how they're going to be, everything's isolated. The PICU, every room breaks down into a, you know, an OR instantly. Everything that happens there is on the spot, up to the date, state of the art. The labs, everything is happening the way it should happen. Dr. Ralph Diaz came with his wife all the way from El Paso, Texas. She had a little trouble adjusting in the beginning uh, in terms of uh, getting, just finding where the supermarket was, where to buy <laughs> gas, we don't have a mechanic, getting the phone and everything, but now she really likes it here. She got a good job here and she likes it. I don't, I don't think she's going to want to let her leave. And that's important since Dr. Diaz admits most of his life will be spent at the hospital working on his residency. So as you can see, the hospital is not just moving boxes and children, it's moving people. People who will play an important role in caring for children. 
Oh, hundreds and hundreds of employees, though, at the New Valley Children's Hospital were live inside the Jellyfish Cafe here at the Madera County site, and this is really unique, and Mary Dean is with me from the hospital. Mary, explain this, would you please? Well, these, this is the work of some wonderful young artists who really obviously knew what they were doing. Um, the, the thrill of all of this is to see the expressions on the kids' faces when they walk in here. It's just uh, an incredible thing to see and hear. The kids come in, and it's oohs and ahs, and um, they really want to stay. <laughs> I don't suppose they can order a peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich? You bet they can. <laughs> oh. Well, the whole hospital is kid friendly. Explain some other areas. Well, there are all sorts of things here that make you know that kids had a lot to do with building this hospital. And we actually did uh, talk to kids when we were building the hospital as well as to visit other places. But there are things like low counters so that kids don't have to mm -hmm. peer over something. And there are starlights in the, uh, thanks. Um, in the um, patient rooms. Yeah. Um, there are all sorts of colors around that make it a warm and friendly place. And there are pictures of children on the walls. So, you know, a child might come here for something and their picture might end up on the wall. So it feels good. The outside of the building is also incredible because it's not intimidating. It's only two stories from the front. Did, did kids tell you those things in your travels? Did they, you know, verbatim say, this is why I'm afraid to go to a hospital because it looks too big and, and monstrous? I think they said things to us like, you know, we hope it isn't too big. Um, hospitals can be scary places. So what do you do when you hear that from kids? You try really hard not to make it a scary place. Well, what are your first visitors saying about the new hospital? That is the most fun part, to see kids come in this building. It, we had a, an event here about a week ago, and there were about 2,000 children in the back pay, play yard. And it was just like a play yard. Kids loved it. And we have a great story about one of our board members who has a daughter. And um, she needed an x-ray last week, and she fell off a swing or something. And she said, Dad, can we please go to the New Valley Children? Oh, now they want to come now here. Come. Mary Dean, thanks for being with us. And when we come back, living proof of the miracles that happen every day and have happened every day for the past 46 years at Valley Children's Hospital. We'll be right back. The golden city of El Dorado vanished. Gold doubloons lost at sea. The goose that laid the golden egg, dinner. Now, there's the Lexus Golden Opportunity. Don't let this one slip away. You'll find the Lexus of your dreams, including the ES300 with its spirited V6. Whether you buy or lease, values are incredible. But hurry, the Lexus Golden Opportunity ends August 31st at Fresno Lexus. If you love that one-of-a-kind taste from Popeyes, if you love all those original New Orleans flavors, then get in line, friends, for the deal that's shaking at our place. It's Popeye's eight-piece family pack. Now get eight pieces of our mouth-watering chicken, a large side item, and four buttery biscuits for just $8.99. Order it spicy or order it mild. <laughs> just order it. Hurry in for our eight-piece family pack. It's only $8.99, and it's only at Popeye's. If you're going to need anything for your home in the next year, plan to be at Ventura TV and Appliances Mega Sale. Everything is on sale. Like this ultra-quiet, water-efficient dishwasher with two motors, just $2.39. Modern-made self-cleaning double oven with upper convection oven, only $6.99. And Frigidaire's Deluxe 24-foot side-by-side with ice water and crushed ice, just $8.99. Savings that are out of this world. Now, at Ventura TV and Appliance, the Mega Sale. More than you know, we have a giant Buick year-end closeout inventory right now. Buick's award-winning power, comfort, and style. Now available with 0.9 financing up to 36 months. Think of it, 0.9, or choose up to $2,500 cash back. The time is now. The choice is yours. 0.9 or giant cash back. Hurry to your Northern California Buick dealer. Hi, folks. Kevin Walsh inside the Old Valley Children's Hospital at Millbrook and Shields. And this is Cambria Banks. She's eight years old from Lemoore. And she came in Thursday night, had a kidney infection. How are you feeling today, Cambria? Good. Feeling a lot better, aren't you? Yeah. Now, the new uh, facility, you were hoping that you would get a chance to go visit there? Yeah. Okay, well... The bad news for her is she will not, well, there isn't any bad news. She would like to go check it out, but the good news is she's probably going to go home tonight, so she's not going to be making the trip, and that's good news. This is her mother, Cindy, right here. Uh, you will not be doing any overnighters at the new facility soon, but you will have to make some trips. Are you excited about the New Valley Children's Hospital? Yes, 
We're looking forward to seeing it and getting acquainted with everyone there and again. It'll be nice over there. It's a longer trip for you. Does that matter? No. The quality of care is so much better that we'll make the trip in every case with her. Okay. That's Cindy Banks and uh, little Cambria over here, eight years old, feeling a lot better than she did on Thursday night. I'm Kevin Wallace reporting live at the Old Valley Children's Hospital. Let's go back across the San Joaquin River to John Wallace. The brand new place, Kevin, and uh, I know it's kind of a, a bittersweet goodbye for the folks at, uh, at the old hospital site at uh, Shields and Millbrook, but I'll tell you what, this is a beehive of activity here at the new site in Madera County. You know, thinking back over the past, I wish I could think back over the past 46 years of the service of Valley Children's Hospital, but they have had literally thousands upon thousands of children that they have helped. There's almost an unofficial alumni association of young girls and young boys who have grown up and very, very healthy, and there are a couple of here at, uh, at the new site that I'd like to say hi to. Uh, introduce yourselves, please. Good evening, I'm Paige, and this is my twin sister, Cameron. Um, we were born 20 years ago, next in two weeks, September 16th at Fresno Community Hospital, and we were two months premature. I weighed 31 and Cameron weighed 215, and we were transported to Valley Children's Hospital. We stayed there a month, and now we're happy, healthy adults, having a good life. People just tell you these stories. You don't know a thing about it probably, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> but we saw some great looking pictures of you after you were born. You weighed how much? Three pounds, one ounce. And your sister? Two pounds, 15 ounces. Wow, and they're among the many, among the many preemies that have been born over the years at Valley Children's Hospital. I have never done this in my 32 years of broadcasting, but I get to uh, kiss an interviewee. Happy birthday in a couple of weeks to my two daughters, Cameron and Paige, just a couple of the alums who've made it through Valley Children's Hospital with a clean bill of health. Love you guys very, very much. We're going to have a progress report tonight coming up on 47 On Your Side News and then again at 11 o'clock. And please join us for 47 this morning between 5.30 and 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll tell you how the overnight uh, transport went of these beautiful, beautiful babies. And uh, we're so glad that you watched us tonight for this pr special presentation of 47 On Your Side. A look at the new hospital, remembering it's for the children and it's their new place to heal. Good night. <laughs>